Hello, my name is Ethan Taylor. I'm an AP Biologist student who will be demonstrating DNA replication in Minecraft. As you see here, I have several different diagrams to walk us through this. But before we go into replication, we need to understand the structure of DNA, its functions, and how it shapes and how it interacts with the molecules within. DNA is composed of nucleotides with a deoxyribose sugar a single phosphate group and a nitrogen and a nitrogen base. These bases can vary. There are four bases. There are adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. These all be representing in their respective colors as shown here. And they bind together based on what's compatible for them. And I'll be going in more into that later. DNA has an anti-parallel structure which means that it has two lines or strands bound together with opposite directionality. The directionality of two or more nucleotides is five prime to three prime as expressed here, with a five prime end being the top side of the uh, nucleotide or what I refer to as the top side with the phosphate facing upwards. The three prime end is the bottom of this deoxyribose sugar. When two strands of DNA are combined, they have opposite directionality creating that anti-parallel structure that I discussed before. No matter how many nucle nucleotides there are, we will always have a five prime end and a three prime end if they're assembled correctly. These two strands are bound together by hydrogen bonds between nitrogen bases. Each pair of nitrogen bases is made up of one purine and one pyrimidine. The difference between these uh, pyrimidines and purines are their ring structure. So purines are made up of two rings, and the purines are adenine and guanine, and the pyrimidines are thymine and cytosine. A purine always binds to a pyrimidine, and the, bi the binding between an adenine and a thymine will always be two hydrogen bonds, as expressed here by these end rods, and three hydrogen bonds between guanine and cytosine. These bonds are weak and non-convalent, meaning that their interactions are entirely dependent on the polarity of the participant molecules. There's no electron exchange here, it's just simply the structure of the overall molecule contributing to a negative or positive charge for the orientation of hydrogen molecules to create hydrogen bonds. Now that we have an idea of how this works, we're going to go into DNA replication. DNA replication, all these factors play together to make for a complex and rigorous process that only makes up one small piece of cellular replication as a whole. DNA replication begins with a topoisomerase. Uh, I'm assuming I'm pronouncing that wrong, but it's a fun word and I like saying it that way, topoisomerase, which unravels DNA into a workable form, thereby, in this case, unraveling it to be flat, allowing us to view it easily and allowing later enzymes and proteins to work with the DNA. As you see here, it goes from its sort of curvy, curly structure to a more workable, flattened out, almost rail-like structure. After the topoisomerase um, does its work, a helicase comes in and splits the strands of DNA into two. Single strand binding proteins, which I've represented with these purple, um, purple blocks here, hold the strands in place so that way they don't move, don't reconnect, or don't do anything funky while the rest of the proteins are working on it. The leading strand, which is what we'll be focusing on right now, goes from five prime to three prime. The five prime end is the end where DNA is being fed from. As this sort of helicase goes down and splits the molecule, there's more DNA to work with. <clears throat> The way this is split up and the directionality of the leading strand allows the process of DNA replication on the leading strand to be entirely continuous. <clears throat> For reasons we will go into in a moment. Several proteins start to go to work on the leading strand, starting with primase, which is this sort of emerald block structure I've made here. Primase attaches a uh, RNA closer to the uh, three prime end of the molecule, which guides a another molecule, another enzyme, called polymerase 3 into beginning replication. Polymerase 3 works from 3 prime to 5 prime, and because this is the end where DNA is being fed in, this means that the polymerase can work constantly 
towards the fork and never have to stop. As this is happening, um, DNA polymerase 1 will come in and replace the RNA, which primary is placed in with DNA, thus finishing replication on the leading strand. This is much simpler than replication on the lagging strand. In both DNA polymerase 3 and DNA polymerase 1, a molecule called nucleoside triphosphate is used to form the new, the new DNA. Nucleoside tri uh, triphosphate has a design, or rather shape, similar to that of ATP, where it has these sort of three phosphates which store energy in their bonds. When being synthesized into DNA, two phosphates are broken off to supply energy for the reactions involved in putting the, involved in putting the nucleotide in place, and the new nucleotide is taken and added on to the strand of DNA by a polymerase. Each base added is added one at a time from the three ends to the five end of leading strand, creating a new strand with opposite directionality of five prime to three prime, where the five, five prime end is right here, and the three prime end is right here. This creates a new strand of DNA for the leading strand. As I stated before, because the DNA is being split in the direction the polymerase 3 is moving, the process of DNA synthesis on the leading strand is continuous, making a uniform strand with no separations or breaks other than where the primase worked. Before we go into replication of the lagging strand, I would like to note that DNA replication happens at multiple points along the original strand, called replication bubbles. And this means that a single original strand of DNA is taken and it's split at multiple points. This creates multiple forks and multiple bubbles, and you can tell how far bubbles progress and how much work has been done on it based on the size of the bubble. So this bubble has been worked on for longer than this one right here, as this one is just beginning. This allows the cell to do replication very quickly as it can do at multiple points along the strand of DNA to ensure that it gets done quickly and efficiently. Eventually in the grand scheme of these eventually in the grand scheme of these reactions, the original strands will be completely split, and two very, very long strands of unique DNA will exist, built off of these two strands of DNA. Now for the last part of this presentation, replication on the lagging strand. Replication on this strand will be discontinuous because it is the opposite of the leading strand. And what this means is that it goes from 3' prime at the fork to 5' prime at the end. This causes polymerase 3, which is also used in this reaction, to have to constantly move back towards the fork in order to uh, continue replication, as once it hits this point right here where the DNA goes back to normal because it's not being split by a um, helicase, it has to move back as more DNA gets fed in. This creates these things called Okazaki fragments, which are these sort of separate sections of DNA. And this causes an extra step of the reaction to have to occur. Now you'll also notice here that there are multiple primases along uh, this stretch of DNA. And this is because in order for the polymerase 3 to get going again, it needs another primase. So every time an Okazaki fragment is formed, Another primase has to be set down by um, your, uh, or another R. <sighs> okay. You'll see here that there are multiple strands of RNA along this lagging strand of DNA. And this is because every time an Okazaki fragment is formed, the DNA polymerase 3 needs to restart the process. And it needs a primase to come in, set some RNA on the strand, and continue the, the cycle of uh, synthesis. This means that polymerase 1 sees a lot more work when working on the lagging strand as they have to go in and replace every bit of DNA here. This creates a strand of DNA that looks a lot like this, whereas there's a bunch of separated strands of DNA, and this is where ligase comes in. Ligase comes in and fills in these gaps right here in order to basically make the DNA continuous. After the ligase comes in and fills in all these spaces, 
the unit replication is complete. And that right there is the unit replication fully represented in Minecraft. Thank you for watching. Give me an A.